Welcome to the Code with Jason meetup. Today we're going to be doing some more work on Saturn CI. Um, as usual, I'm going to start by reminding myself what a uh, loose end I left last time. Um, prob.py, I think that is like not anything actually. Um, so it looks like I maybe didn't leave a loose end for myself, but that's okay. We can... Um, we can figure it out real quick. So the last thing that I was working on was I was working on making the test runs faster by implementing caching. And that took me months of work. Not, you know, it was only like an hour a week at most, maybe on average, but it, it took, it took months. Um, and I got the builds down from like four or five minutes. I even see one that's eight and a half minutes here, but usually four or five minutes down to about two or three minutes. That's obviously a pretty significant improvement. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And, um, you know, Ryan, um, what the part of the reason I was working on this specifically is because um, a few of my consulting clients have expressed interest in actually using this product, but in trying to get one of my clients onboarded, I discovered that the feedback loop was just way too slow. It took forever for the tests to run. And so I was like, okay, I have to make this faster before I can really get people onboarded. And so now the builds are maybe fast enough um, but there's some other things that need to, to happen. Um, and maybe I'm just going to, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, are you, how are you, uh, are you actually like comparing that to any other solution? Like, do you try to run your code base through to GitHub actions, for example, to say, all right, this is, you know, that takes five minutes, but this takes 10 or is it more of just an eye test at this point? Good question. Um, it's, it's more, it's, it's something different. Um, I found that for the particular code base that I tried to get set up on Saturn CI, it was very much not easy. There were a lot of snags that I ran into. And so there was a lot of just like changing something and then pushing it up and seeing if it would run and like trial and error over and over. And sometimes it would take like multiple hours to run. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I guess the caching stuff that I did just now, like, is not going to address any of that. But I at least knew for, like, absolute certain that it was wasteful to in to reinstall the gems every single time there was a test run. You know, like, nothing changed, but we're still reinstalling the same exact gems over and over. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I did that because I knew for sure that that was not going to be a waste of time. What's the mechanics of that look like? I mean, are you just like literally like when you say caching the gems? Yeah, is this on the server somewhere, like like because you, you're on Digital Ocean, right? Yeah. So if you're really curious, you can go back and and see some of the some of the videos that led up to this. But I can come. Okay. Of, yeah. No, so. no, that's fine. I, I can do that. It, it... Well, I'll summarize it too. Um. There, so ChatGPT uh, advised me to set up something called a Docker registry cache. Mm -hmm. And so when we do a build, if it's like the first build you ever do, it will, it will do the build and then push it up to the Docker registry cache. And then the next time you do a build, it'll just check the Docker registry cache and be like, okay, is there a pre-built image? already there okay if so then just use that one that makes total sense thank you yeah yeah and that takes care of not just the gems but like anything anything at all that's unchanged since last time will not get rebuilt if it was smart enough to diff and then build anything that's missing or does it you know if it doesn't i you know match completely it rebuilds the whole thing at that point well, some of the stuff I had to learn for the first time, but I learned that Docker images, <clears throat> Docker images exist in layers. 
And so, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to take too big of a digression, but I'll, <laughs> I'll explain this part. Um, Saturn Docker file. Yeah. So I'm not going to get this exactly right, but throughout this Docker file, it's going to make certain layers. Um, I think when I copy the gem file, that it, it's going to make a layer at that point. And then once I copy the JSON packages and install that, it's going to make another layer. Then when I copy the all the file content, it's going to make another layer. And I think it's kind of like, if it gets to any layer that's different, then it like rebuilds anything after. Yeah. I'm not sure that I'm right about that, but something like that. Yeah, um, I was just immediately I'm thinking about like the asset pipeline and how it uses the you know the hash key, right? Oh yeah. I was wondering if it was something like that where it, it sort of works like GitHub, but it, it sounds like a similar concept, but yeah. Layers. Yeah, so I think the normal case, because the code's gonna be different from build to build, but the gems and the and the yarn packages won't necessarily be the necessarily be different. So it's like it might be get here and say, okay, that's the same, don't rebuild. This is the same, don't rebuild. Oh, the code's different. Let's rebuild that. Yeah, cool. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah. Um okay. So I think I'm actually at a point where I don't have any concrete plans. Um, and so let's think. I do have some notes. And so I suppose I'll pull up those notes. Um, oh, no. I just pulled up something that I should not have pulled up. Um, oh, it's OK. I just won't put this online. <laughs> I did a call with a guy and I had to, I took some notes on his weaknesses. So I don't want to publish that for the world to see. Well, you're not sharing your screen, so you're safe. Oh, I'm not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Happy accident. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pull up my, um, my Saturn notes here. Bear with me a second. Mm -hmm. notebooks saturn yeah okay now i will share my screen okay yeah so i was under the impression that i was sharing this before you can see the the builds back in the past were like four or five minutes and now they're just like two or three minutes. Anyway, um, oh, yeah, I had pulled up a Docker file and, you know, <laughs> layer here, layer here, layer here. I got the general gist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have some notes of like um, some things that I want to do. Yeah, this is kind of my my master to do list, and there are a couple loose ends from the caching still. Change registry cache tag from latest to branch name. This is kind of an annoying one, but we'll dive into it anyway. So, from build to build, the code is probably going to change, but the gems and stuff probably won't. And this stuff all makes sense if you're like rebuilding on the same branch. But what if there's like two users and they're building on two different branches? Like it seems inappropriate to just grab whatever globally happened to me most recent. Because like, Ryan, if you're working on a branch and I'm working on a branch, the most recently cached thing might be your branch. So then my build will like look at your cache. It, it seems inappropriate, you know? Yeah. But I'm questioning whether that should be a priority. Because there's other things. The, the next like big thing that I want to address is log streaming, 
like right now, if I run a build, I'll just click rerun on this build. <clears throat> And one thing on my long to-do list is to make reruns trigger in the background so we don't have to wait that long for it to come back up. But this build is running, but the logs are empty until it's finished. Mm. And that's not great. And yeah, now you want to see some feedback that something's happening. Exactly. So I think I might actually turn my attention to that next. Yeah, I, I, I'm not... It's unclear what the real value of the last one would be at this point. I yeah, I definitely think it's going to be necessary, but it's like not having the log streaming it's more feels necessary. a lot more painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the question is, how do we get this, this log streaming to work? Well, let's talk about how the logs work a little bit. Um, I'm going to do the Saturn CI builds. Is that the command? Okay. So here's this build that's running. I want to SSH into this. Oh, no, I want to do Saturn CI jobs. Yeah. And I'm going to SSH into this job. Okay, and I can get the logs if I do tail dash F user log. Hmm, sorry, maybe it's ver, ver log system. Oh, ver log syslog, okay. Yeah, so basically I wanna do the equivalent. I wanna have this outputting the equivalent of tail dash F ver log syslog. Okay, so time to get ChatGPT involved. Um, okay, I'm building a CI platform. I want to stream the logs from the build machines uh, in my web UI. Basically, I want to show the equivalent of tail dash F bear log syslog on the web UI. Help me figure out how to do this. Ask me questions in order to give a better answer. Okay, and I'll start answering. Oh, network error. Okay. Regenerate. Okay, number one, Rails. Um build machines are on digital ocean. Power logs currently managed. Hmm. I'm going to say, no, I'm not using any of those. Security. Um, I already have certain security measures in place. Real time requirements. How real time does it need to be? A few seconds of delay is acceptable. Huh, I've never seen this message before. Memory updated. Yeah, that's a new feature that they just rolled out. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it'll, it'll keep, because it, it, you, you must be on a paid plan. Yeah. Yeah, it will now keep track of your conversations to give you better answers over time. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, log collection setup on build machines. Okay, install rsyslog. I don't know what that is. 
Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to share with it the script that runs on these job machines, just in case that's helpful. Okay, and this froze, so I'll have to kill this. Okay, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to share with it the script that runs on the job machines in case it's relevant. In case it's helpful, here's the script that runs on my job machines. Does this change your answer at all? Send logs via API. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do I already have a logs input or is it just suggesting this is something new? Let's see. Okay. I have a system logs input. Okay. I think I said input. I meant to say input. Um, yeah so okay since i have this endpoint i might have i must have a, a system logs controller yeah okay so currently i'm just sending the system logs all in one request at the end and when my system logs endpoint receives that payload it's just taking the job and saying, hey, now the system logs are equal to this payload that we got. And so now we're going to have to do something different where we send it bit by bit and we just append each chunk that gets sent. So I'm going to share this with ChatGPT. Say, here's how I'm doing it now. Um, for the moment, I want to focus exclusively on the system logs as opposed to the test output. I think I need to change my script to send the log content in chunks and change my controller to append each chunk to the log content. Okay, to send the log content in chunks, you can modify your script to read and send chunks of logs periodically. Okay, this seems kind of complicated, but maybe that's necessary. Hmm. Okay. I have a continuing struggle, which is that I keep needing to add functionality to my script that runs on the job machines, but I have a fear of making it too big and complicated and too monolithic. Right now it's like not modular at all. It's just this one procedural file, but as of now, I don't have a lot of good ideas as to how to manage this part better. Because it kind of needs to be one file because 
when we initialize one of these job machines, it has what's called user data. And what we send as the user data takes the form of a script that gets executed automatically on the machine. Um, and we could theoretically, theoretically take some other approach. Like I could imagine a scenario where I have a whole Ruby repo with a number of different files and then my job machine uses that Ruby program, but I'm not sure if that would be better or not. Anyway, what we're wanting to add, yeah, yeah we're going to say something. I was going to say, I mean, that may be a problem, but it's not the one you're working on. Yeah, but sometimes it's appropriate to <laughs> stop working on the problem I'm working on and, and address that other thing first, but I'm not yet sure. Um, so at one point, do the logs start? I guess the logs start just immediately. Like the moment the machine comes online or whatever, that's when the logs start. I could have, in theory at least, I could have a separate script, a separate process that reads the logs and sends the, um, the chunks of output to Saturn CI. Hmm. I'm really not sure. Side note, one weakness of remote work is that it feels weird on like calls like this to just like sit and silently think when you're in person, it's like kind of more normal to do that, but it feels weird to just sit here and be like, hang on, let's all just silently think for 30 seconds. You need some uh, thinking music. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going. My concern is that as I add to my job machine script, it's going to get so big and complicated that I won't be able to understand it. Any suggestions on how to address this concern? I mean, as dumb as it sounds, like splitting it into functions doesn't seem like a bad idea. And when you were talking about it earlier, I was envisioning like how a Ruby gem is organized where you have one entry point and then it just calls the various modules. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's an equivalent to that in, in Bash, but. Well, for starters, I think I can at least organize it into into various functions. And even before I do that, let me take a look at these existing functions I have and see if I'm happy with these. These are, as you can see, these are a bit duplicative, but maybe that's not, maybe they only appear duplicative. Maybe they aren't really duplicative. Hmm. What actually is the difference between these two? I have API request and send content to API. One's data and one's data binary. I don't know what the difference of those are. Oh, I see. Otherwise, it's just one seems to be uh, more generic than the other. Yeah. Yeah, that seems right. So I'm using API request for like sending sending these events and such. Okay. And incidentally, it looks like they 
Oh, I was going to say they're all post, but this one's delete. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then send content to API. That's just used for this log stuff. Okay. Well, maybe there's not enough duplication here to make it worth deduplicating. So I guess I'll leave these alone from for now because I'm not sure that deduplicating it would be an improvement. Okay. But there's other things that I can certainly change like um, this cloning user repo thing. I can put that into a um, function. But one second, what is this CD projector part? I'm hesitant to put, I'm hesitant to just put this in a function right away because the CD, CDing into a different directory is a um, side effect, but maybe it's a side effect I'm okay with. Okay, I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so I'm not super well-versed in bash script coding, so this might take be some trial and error, but I'll call this clone user repo, I suppose. Okay. Clone user repo. And I noticed that when I use the API request function, there are no parentheses. So is this how I do clone re clone user repo? I assume so. And I feel like I want to put the echo right here. And actually, I think I want to put this API request on the outside also. Yeah. Because that seems like a separate concern. Okay. So here we have this token. It's only being used inside the scope of this function. Okay. So... Maybe that'll work. I'm just gonna ask ChatGPT. Am I calling clone user repo correctly? Is my syntax right? Okay. So unfortunately, the only way to test this is to actually push it up and do a build. So I guess we'll do that. Create clone user repo function. Okay. Okay. And in about two or three minutes, we'll see the result from that. I'm going to set my timer on my phone so I know when I can go check. In the meantime, we can look at the next chunk to turn into a function. Okay. Authenticating to Docker registry and attempting to pull the existing image to avoid rebuilding if possible. I don't know if I feel like that. I don't know if I feel like there would be a great benefit to moving that somewhere else. I feel like putting something in a function can either provide meaningful and helpful abstraction or doing so can create obfuscation. And I feel like if we put this in a function, it would only serve to obfuscate. Um, 
running pre.sh. So this is a, a user defined script. In my particular case, it just runs db create and db schema load. The reason I didn't just hard code these is because somebody might be in, on an older version of Rails, for example, and they want to do rake db create and rake db schema load. So let's see. Prescript started, prescript finished. Okay. I don't know. I guess I'll do this. Run prescript. Okay. That at least cuts down on a little bit of the noise. Oh, and this one can be reduced substantially. Okay. I'm going to say start test suite. Okay, my syntax highlighting seems to have gone weird. Did I do something wrong? Is it because of this? Huh. Is that like not valid syntax or something? My timer just went off by the way, so I'll check this. Okay, that seems to have worked. Is this valid syntax? Oh, I'm going to start at the beginning of a line. Okay. There. All right. Man, I think this to myself so many times a day. Thank God for ChatGPT. It's just so great. That's really an annoying requirement. <laughs> oh, that it has to be formatted like yeah. that? Yeah. That would drive me is. crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm curious. Are these just used in the same scope? Yeah, apparently so. Okay. Okay, so we added run prescript and start test suite. Okay, and I'll verify that another build gets kicked off. Mm -hmm. Start my timer again. Okay, and we'll see what else there is. Oh, wow, okay. Well, the script feels a lot smaller now. And I'll just kind of read down the list here. Job machine ready, cloning user repo, checking out commit, commit hash, authenticating to the Docker registry, attempting to pull the existing image to avoid rebuilding if possible, running pre.sh, running tests, test suite finished, sending system log, sending test output, sending report, performing Docker push, deleting job machine. Okay. I am actually pretty happy with that. Okay, so let's see. I want to kick off a process 
that will send the build log in chunks. And actually, I don't want to worry at all about code cleanliness or anything. In the beginning, I just want a like proof of concept. And then if that works, then we can then we can clean it up. Okay. Yeah, let's look again at this um, suggested solution from ChatGPT. I mean, this is just like a mess. This is this is crazy, but maybe it's necessary. Let's see. Let's take this bit by bit. I'm gonna bring it over here. Okay. Send the initial portion of the log. Hmm. Periodically send new lines. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what what is it. what is messy to you? I mean, it's just taking chunks of a hundred lines every ten se or sending a hundred lines and every ten seconds sending the new from the last line, right? Until it's done. Yeah. It's just hard for me to understand at a glance. Um, but maybe who cares? Let's do this. Whoops. I'm just going to move this. Oh, my timer already went off. Whoops. Did I just stop sharing my screen? Yes. I clicked in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, let's check here. Okay. That passed also. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to paste this in here. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But I just want to cheaply do an experiment. System logs. ChatGPT had a suggestion for how to change this also. Who knows if I'm going to want to ultimately go with this. But just for this cheap experiment, I'll try this. Okay. I'm going to do this on a different branch so I don't pollute my main branch. Um, log, no, system log streaming. Add chat GPT generated system log streaming code. Okay. And I guess the only way right now to know if this is going to actually work is, well, maybe not the only way, but the easiest way will be to just wait until this finishes running and see if the logs are here. But I guess that doesn't tell us for absolute certain because... Hit, hit refresh as it goes, as you should sh start seeing... Oh, yeah, I suppose you're right, huh? Right, if it's chunking every 10 seconds, you should see a change to your output here. And I also should see, on ingrok, I should see some, um, some system API, log yeah. endpoint hits. Yeah. We're so far, we're not seeing. Oh, but you know what? It's... Uh, we're at job machine requested, but the job machine isn't ready yet. That takes a little while. How long does that tend to take? Let's see. 65 seconds, 56 seconds. All right, so about a minute. 
and this started at 1352 all right so oh and it just changed to 54 so let's see all right apparently it's taken a bit longer than it did on this other occasion 49 seconds 54 seconds I'm going to SSH into this machine just to see if everything's going okay. Bad credentials. Interesting. Oh, maybe that's because I killed the pain and came back. Okay. Hmm, taking a long time to SSH in for some reason. Okay. Tail dash F, bear log, syslog. Okay, stuff is happening. Okay. Um, but it doesn't say job machine ready yet. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what it's actually doing right now. Is that is that warning normal for you? I don't know. Couldn't read data from file, blah blah blah. This makes an empty post. Okay. Oh, and it is making the posts to system logs. Let's see if it's getting anything. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. And I don't remember what exactly was in the change we made. So let's take a look. Okay. Well, it seems like this would basically just get stuck in an infinite loop and never proceed beyond this chunk, you know? Yeah, because what is... It's just what well is true. true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it needs to be in like a parallel thread to this. Okay. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. So let's kill this one because I don't think it's ever going to kill itself. Let's see. Actually, I think I have a command. No, I don't have a command line way to do this. Okay. Okay, that's taken care of. Yeah, and I'm going to say to chat GPT. Since the log streaming part starts with while true, it seems like that loop would just run forever. And my script would never proceed past that point. It seems to me like we must need to put it in a separate thread or something. Thoughts? By the way, I think I'm going to go until about 15 after. If you guys need to drop off, that's obviously fine. Just letting you know that I'm going to go a little longer than normal. Okay, you are correct in your assessment, it says. Okay, define a function for log streaming. Run it in the background. Interesting, I don't even have to have a separate script. All right, I like that. 
this adds the added benefit of cleaning that up for you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll copy this. I don't know if I'm still crazy about my commented lines here, but I'll leave them at least for now. Put an echo in there. What's in? Uh, no, you got it. Okay. Um, starting to stream logs. Okay. Make it so log streaming runs in background. Okay, there we go. Something I haven't figured out how to, well, I haven't even tried to figure out how to address it yet, is when a job just kind of fails in an unexpected way, it just gets stuck and running. So I'm just going to delete this one so I don't have to look at that. Okay, so we'll take a look at our events again. So in about a minute or two, we should see that the job machine is ready. And if this works, big if, but if this works, then we should be able to just go to system logs and periodically hit refresh. And that's obviously better than nothing. Um, that gives us that feedback that, that we want even if it's not a very elegant UI for it. But I think I think I probably do want to go the full distance and make it so it streams nicely because um, that just seems nice. Okay, job machine is ready. No logs yet. Okay. I don't know if the, I assume the newest ones are on the top. Okay, it is sending the logs, but we're not seeing the logs. Okay. Let's SSH, SSH in and see what's happening. What are you looking to find by SSHing in? Oh, good question. I'm just trying to get some visibility and see what's going on. Because you're getting a 200 response that's hitting the endpoint. So I would think you'd want to go to the controller and see what's being returned on the rail side, if anything. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm just watching this for a second. I'm curious to see if it's doing its normal stuff. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay. So I'm going to go open up a Rails console. And I'll find this job. So um, copy link address. Um, okay, yeah, this is the, whoops, this is the job ID. Maybe I'll just do this. Okay, job.system logs. Oh, they're there. Okay, so maybe it's not showing the system logs unless some certain condition is met that's not met until the end. Let's right. see. Uh, 
Okay. So terminal output do build.jobs.each job container, blah, blah, blah. So what does job container do? Okay. Job info equals capture yield. If job info dot present do this, otherwise, but nothing here yet. Okay. So it seems like job dot system logs should exist. What's job dot info though? Job dot info is just the yield of the job container. Ah. So it would be this. Um, what was I going to look at next? Job info. Oh yeah. I was going to look at the job model. Is system logs just a regular database column? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. That is surprising. Okay, and then it's stuck in running for whatever reason. Probably need to kill the background thread. Background thread. I would imagine, well, I'm making a huge assumption here because mm -hmm. I have no <laughs> experience with scripting like this. But would it, would killing the droplet at the end terminate the, the background thread or do you have to explicitly, of uh, the system, log streaming or do you have to explicitly close that in order to oh i see what you mean kill the droplet at the end like that because um, there's still a while loop right it's never going to end something yeah. needs to terminate it yeah no i i believe it would just end when the job machine gets killed i don't see how it could continue okay and this is still going Job one, job two. Oh, this doesn't seem to be working right. This uh, switch in between job one and job two. Okay, and is test suite finished actually the last event that's supposed to occur? Apparently so. Okay, but anyway, the question is, why, why did the, oh, hang on a second. This is not a big mystery at all. We're still doing this. So that would explain how that got there. Okay, I'm much less confused now. So it seems much more likely that the log output was just never making it from the streaming. And the only reason we're seeing this is because it got sent at the end. That would make more sense. Yeah. Remove the part where log output gets sent at the end. System log output. Okay. Now I don't see any reason why this should work. Um, so let's see. So either the script that's supposed to send the log content isn't actually sending it or the application isn't receiving it. For some reason, the former seems more likely to me than the latter. Meaning that it's not like it, it's sending something, but it's not sending the actual stream. Yeah, right, I'm we... guessing that it's just sending an empty string. Well, we can easily um, verify that, at least maybe. I mean, the simplest, you just throw a binding.pry in the controller and see what happens when you receive the data. Yeah, and maybe even easier than that, will, will these, oops. Will these um, sendings 
will, will these calls to the API be logged in the system log? Let's see. Hmm, looks like maybe not. We see the one post at the end, but that's all. Maybe the fact that, um, maybe the fact that it gets run in the background means that it doesn't get logged for some reason. I don't know. Okay. Um, here's an idea. Instead of periodically, instead of periodically sending a chunk of the logs, let's do something a lot simpler. <laughs> let's just send one single chunk of the logs one time. Because there's enough stuff happening here that like, who knows what could be going wrong. Let's do something much simpler um, that has a much smaller chance of, of going wrong. So just mm, get but, rid of the while loop. Yeah, but I'm realizing now that if we do that at the very beginning. There may not be anything to report. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go through line by line and try to understand some of this stuff. Okay, so we take the head of the log file and we pipe it to send content to API. What, how does that work? Okay, so the arguments are the endpoint, the content type, and then the content. Okay, so endpoint, content type, and then I guess the pipe sends the content at the end. But does that really work that way? Hmm. Since I can't easily test it, I'm going to ask ChatGPT. Okay. Does pipe really work that way? Will it send the head of log file as the last argument of send content to API? You know what I think I might rather do instead is something like this. That is like more explicit. Because like with this, it's kind of a mystery. It's like, how am I supposed to know that there's another argument that goes here? But if I do it like this, then I can see that this is getting sent as the last argument. And then I'm going to do it the same way down here. Um, And actually, I want to break this up onto two lines, I think. Why is this formatting going weird on me? Sorry, one second. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Yeah. And then I'm going to say content. Whoops. Um, content equals 
that there. Okay. Local. I've never used the local variable in bash scripting before, but apparently you can. Okay. So let's see if that works. Attempts to fix calls to send content to API. Okay, and we're about at the end of time, but I'm at least gonna go long enough to see if this most recent attempt is gonna work. All right, so I'll set my timer for three minutes. Oh, and actually, I guess if it works, we'll find out before then. I'm gonna set my timer for one minute. So that's about when it should actually start going. Again, some Jeopardy music right now would be great. Yeah, I know. Okay. And I'm curious if it might have converged on the same solution as me. I'll use a temporary file. That's a weird idea. Yeah, neither of these ideas seem good. Okay. While we're waiting, maybe we can just review this code and see if we can understand what it's doing. So last line starts as starts at 100. Local new last line equals, okay, so we take the number of lines in the log file. So it's like, first we just grab the first 100 lines. We just pick an arbitrary amount. Um, which by the way is maybe not the smartest idea because who says it will have a hundred lines to start with? If we do this, hmm, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it takes the number of lines in that file. If new last line is greater than last line, I assume is what that means. We grab the content by using said I don't really know how said works very well, so I guess I'll just take its word for it. And then we send that chunk and we set last line to the new last line. Okay. I guess that's easy enough to understand. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. So some stuff has started, but still no logs. Not found, interesting. Couldn't find job with ID, blah, blah, blah. All right, hang on. Did, did you hard code the job somewhere? And that was in the command line, never mind. Um, 51F, let's see. Yeah, neither of these jobs has that ID. Yeah, so this is this job starts with six five six. This one starts with one seven C. So where it's getting this other ID, I don't know. Let's just check that real quick. Job ID. Hmm. That is a mystery. That is a total mystery. Why would it be sending the wrong job ID? Is another droplet still running? Yeah, I kind of wondered that myself. Okay, yeah, it looks like it. All right, so let's kill that one. That's being slow for some reason. So is 
every one of these yeah so we're getting a mix of 404s and 200s but even though we are getting 200s um nothing's going in here apparently so i'm going to kill this we're going to wrap up in a second i'm going to kill this go over to here and can we see what we're being hit with when it hits the system logs endpoint. And I suppose it's totally not out of the question that um, what we're doing here is just wrong because we just copy and pasted this from uh, chat GPT. Looks right. Okay, but this will have to be a task for next time. I'll put this. Um, the system logs aren't showing up. It is the problem that the job isn't sending the logs properly. properly or that this controller isn't saving them properly. Okay, so when I pick this up next, I'll have that comment to remind me what to do next. Okay, well, I feel like we made some acceptable progress. <laughs> All right, thanks guys for joining me and I'll see you next time. See you next time, thanks Jason. Yeah.